In Creo Parametric, you can create complex surfaces using subdivisional modeling, which I like to think of as modeling with clay. You start off with a shape and then you push and pull it in order to get the geometry that you want. The command for subdivisional modeling is the freestyle feature, and that's located right below the style feature. If that's not confusing enough, if you go to the surfaces overflow menu, there's also a restyle feature. And this is part of the reverse engineering extension if you have point cloud data and you want to convert it into a solid model. But here we are taking a look at freestyle. I'm going to create a brand new part to show you from the beginning. I'll just use the new icon and click OK. And now in this brand new part, I will click on the freestyle command and that will open up the ribbon. The first step in creating one of these freestyle features is to select a primitive. And the way that you do that is from the shapes dropdown list. And you have two different kinds. You have open primitives, which are 2D. You have your circle, you have a ring, you have a square and a triangle. And then below that, we have the closed primitives. You have a cube, you have a torus, you have a cylinder and a sphere. And I almost always start off with the sphere. Be aware that you can create multiple primitives in the same freestyle feature. Let me click on the sphere. And now you can see what we start off with. You'll notice that there are a bunch of lines on the surfaces. Those are the subdivisions of the surface. But we also have this cube around our primitive. And the way that you change your shape and make your geometry is essentially by manipulating that cube and grabbing different portions of it and moving it around. In this video, we are just going to take a look at transforming and scaling. In other videos, we will take a look at adding edges and subdividing and extruding and all the other different commands that we have in here. So let me start off. I'm going to select this face of the cube and you'll notice that the 3D dragger moved to that face and now you can grab any of the axes to pull in those different directions and you can also rotate. Let me just grab this one and I'll drag upwards and you can see how the shape is changing. And then I'll grab this one and I'll rotate it so that we can get some twist into it and one thing I recommend, use the undo command a lot when you are doing subdivisional modeling. So in this particular situation, I just grabbed the face and dragged it in a direction. Be aware that you can also position your 3D dragger on different vertices for changing the shape. So I'm grabbing that one and moving it and grabbing this one and moving it as well. Ah, let me hit the undo button because I'm starting to get it to look really kind of strange looking. And you can also select multiple different vertices or edges or different faces. So for example, let me position on this edge over here and I can grab this one and now I'm moving the entire edge. And I'll hold down the control key, grab this other one here. And now I have both of those selected. So I'm moving both of those edges as I am changing the shape. So again, right now I am under the transform command. Two things to mention about transforming. If you go to the manipulation overflow menu, you can choose to move your draggers in increments. And if I turn that on, let me just select say this face over here and grab this. You'll notice that we have a number on the screen. And right now it is changing in increments of 0.1. If you go to the operations overflow menu, here we have an options command and you can control the increments for dragging for your distances and for your angles. And for this one over here, this is the scaling, which we'll see in a moment. So for example, maybe I want to say, hey, let's do these in whole number increments. Then I'll click the OK button. And then when I grab this face and start dragging it, you can see that we are going up in whole numbers. So that is transforming. 
by clicking on this button over here, you can change to scaling. And so for scaling, let me select, say, this edge, and then I can grab the bar, and you can see now I am scaling that edge pretty much linearly, smoothly, as I'm dragging it around. Let me then reposition, let me grab that bottom face over there, a little disoriented. Let me grab this, and now I am scaling that bottom surface. So that's how you can get started with subdivisional modeling. Again, you click on the freestyle feature, you choose what primitive that you want to start with, and then you can begin transforming and scaling the shape by grabbing the different vertices, edges, or faces of the subdivisional shape that you have around your primitive. And when you are happy with your geometry, hit the check mark and then you will have your surface feature. And one thing I want to point out is that this is indeed a surface feature. Let me go back to my previous model. And if I go to the view menu, let's take a look at creating a cross section. I'll go to the section. Let's see what X direction. Yeah, this one you can see that this is hollow on the inside as I drag it through the model. Let me hit the cancel button. And of course, if you want to fill in the interior volume of your surface, you can select your surface and then hit the solidify command and it will end up filling in with internal volume. Let me hit the check mark. And now I actually have a solid part. Once again, if I go to the view tab and the section command, let's create a cross section along the X direction. Let me show a hatch pattern. So you can see, yep, now this is solid inside of my part. So again, that's how you can then take your subdivisional model, your surfaces, and then fill them with interior volume. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.